Great, thank you. Hello, we're here with Carolyn Ladd, who is running for King County Superior Court Judge. Would you like to go ahead with a two minute introduction? Yes, please. Um, my name's Carolyn Ladd. I'm running for King County Superior Court. I'm running because I think to have a more just and equitable judicial system, we need more women judges. Uh, nationwide, only a third of judges are women, and those numbers are getting worse at the federal level because the current administration's appointments to the federal bench have been 75% male. Um, I have been passionate about gender equity since my mother took me to an ERA rally when I was a child. And interestingly, there have been some developments and efforts to ratify the ERA, and I wrote an article about that, if anyone's interested, called uh, Why is Alyssa Milano Tweeting About the ERA? It's on my website, and I wrote it for the King County Bar Association. Um, I've been an employment lawyer uh, for almost 30 years. My practice is focused on compliance with civil rights laws and trying to ensure diversity, equity, and inclusion for all in the workplace. Uh, I went to the National Judicial College's Judicial Academy last fall. I've been working as a pro tem judge in Seattle Municipal Court. I'm really interested in juries and think that juries are so important to our uh, judicial system. And I'm interested in how we can get a better representation of the community in juries. I'm concerned about juror pay being $10 seconds. a day. Oh, am I? Thank you. Um, in King County Superior Court, um, I, I'm, I want to make sure as a judge that black and brown people are not unfairly excluded from jury service due to preemptory challenges. Um, and I'm interested in training jurors so that they are aware of their own implicit biases and don't allow those to influence their decision making. Thank you. Great, thank you. <laughs> Perfect timing. Um, so now we'll move into our prepared questions. And as you can see, they are now in the chat box. You can follow along as we read them. And the order uh, that we're going in this time is Robert, Sherry, Brittany, then Mackenzie. Um, Robert, would you like to go ahead with question one? Sure thing. And, and thank you for taking the time to speak with us. Uh, first question is, what are the pros and cons of going to the bench as compared to practicing law? Well, I can tell you what's inspiring me, uh, and that is a desire to do public service, to do work that is serving the community, that is making a difference in the lives of people. Um, I serve now as a pro tem in Seattle Municipal. I also serve in Kitsap County um, District Court. And those experiences have been really meaningful uh, to me. I've really enjoyed the work. Uh, the matters that come before you are very important to the parties. Sometimes you are making life-changing decisions for people. Uh, even in uh, Kitsap, I hear civil matters. Seattle Municipal is just criminal. Um, but even in civil matters that maybe seem small in the amount of money in dispute, so say small claims court, those matters are still very important to the people who are before you, who are either bringing the claim or defending the claim. And the work is important, it matters to people, it's a public service, and, and that's really what's motivating me and inspiring me um, to want to be a judge. Thank you. Um, question two, Sherry? Hey, um, what have been the most effective methods for improving court procedures and efficiency? And uh, what other methods would you suggest? It's been really interesting during, since the governor's stay home, stay safe order to see the courts uh, using new technology as a way to continue um, the court's work. Uh, last week, this week, I'm losing track of time, uh, the state Supreme Court just did their very first oral argument uh, by Zoom. And uh, who would have thought that we would be seeing the Washington State Supreme Court do an oral argument by Zoom, but they did it. And the United States Supreme Court next week is going to do oral arguments by phone and people will, for the first time ever, be able to listen to oral arguments live. And so I think there are way, courts have been slow to adopt technology. 
Um, for example, the federal courts still are not allowing cameras. Uh, but I think that this uh, time has stretched the courts to think about new ways. Um, there are hearings being held by Zoom and by phone. Um, are there things that we can learn from this time uh, where the courts have had to deal with the uh, stay-at-home orders and is there something we can learn from the technology that we can take forward with us, some best practices, some efficiencies? I, I'm really interested in that. Um, I'm, I signed up today for a, a Zoom National Association of Women Judges where they're going to talk about how the courts are continuing to do their work. So I'm, I'm thinking about what have we learned from this time and what can we take forward with us? Thank you. Uh, Brittany, question three, please. As a judge, what would you consider your greatest strengths and weaknesses? I would say, um, you know, I, I really want the people who come before me, I, I, what I hope are my greatest strengths are the ability to listen um, to be respectful, to give respect to everyone who comes into my courtroom, uh, and to be fair, to make fair decisions. And so I would say that those are strengths of mine, the ability to listen, the ability to treat people with dignity and respect, to exercise good judgment, and um, to make good decisions. Um, as a weakness, I would say um, I have the least, uh, I I'm learning criminal law. That is not an area that I have practiced in as an attorney, but it is an area that I've had to learn as a pro tem judge. So I do hear criminal matters in district court and it's and Seattle Municipal is exclusively criminal. And so that's an area that I know I need to learn. So I've been attending continuing education classes. I've been reading the rules and cases and um, uh, trying to learn that so so that I can be a better judge. And I think Everyone who goes to the bench has to learn something. It's, it's rare that there's a judicial candidate who has experience in all of the kinds of matters that you'll be hearing as a judge. So I recognize seconds. that that's an area that I need to work on and I've been working on it. Great, thank you. Uh, question four, Mackenzie. Sure, thank you. I'll wait till you finish drinking your water. Pardon? I said, I'll wait till you finish drinking your water. No, oh, just, thank you. Yeah. Uh, describe your most difficult case. Why was it difficult and how did you handle it? That's a difficult question because I don't know what I can talk about from the cases that I've handled as an attorney, right? I have attorney client privilege and I'm not sure um, what's public knowledge about the cases that I've handled. Um, I will tell you this just generally. Um, that in the cases that I handle, uh, I, I am, um, you know, trying to make the right decision. The, the work that I do now, um, I'm an employment lawyer and I focus on compliance with civil rights laws and diversity, equity, and inclusion for employees. And so I try very hard um, to make that happen. For example, um, you know, providing accommodation for employees with disabilities is a particular area of interest to me. And um, I try very hard uh, to make sure that people have an opportunity uh, to be successful at work. Um, uh, accommodating uh, religious practices is an area of interest of mine. And for example, Ramadan just started and I've spent a lot of time and effort um, to train managers and human resources people to understand about Ramadan and what employees will need in order to be able to observe that, particularly if they work off shifts um, and they need time seconds. to pray or to eat. So I, I would say that in the, in the um, matters that I handle, how do I handle it? I try, I look at the law, I see what compliance looks like um, with the law. I make sure that we comply with the law, but I'm also trying um, 
to, to go beyond that and to see what, what's possible and how can we um, be an employer of uh, Oops, Thank sorry. You. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so now we're gonna move into a couple of uh, questions that are follow-ups. Um, from any member of the board. Um, they'll raise their hand or message me in the inbox here um, to let me know that they have a question. And um, the responses to those are one minute apiece. So um, does anybody have a follow-up? Sometimes it takes a little while while folks get their, their settings. I apologize, my son is doing uh, his class upstairs. I have a question. So uh, what kind of uh, volunteer activities uh, are you currently involved in or have you been involved in? Um, I am a volunteer for the Lavender Rights Project. Um, I help people change their name and gender marker. I've been involved in trans issues for 20 years. It's part of my passion around gender equity, um, includes um, trans and non-binary people. So um, I do that. I'm also a volunteer for the King County Bar Association's Records Project that helps uh, vacate eligible criminal convictions so that people can truthfully say um, that they haven't been convicted of a crime when they apply for um, oh, housing and employment. And I wrote an article about that too that was in the King County Bar Journal about second chances in housing and employment. Um, I serve on the uh, Washington Women Lawyers Board and am involved in helping organize um, continuing legal education for lawyers and promoting women Ten seconds. in the profession. Great, thank you. Uh, Laura. If elected, are there any particular rotations in the Supreme Court that you, or the Superior Court that you would be interested in? You know, I'm interested in all of them. Um, my practice area for 30 years has been civil, um, but as I say, I'm learning criminal law. I'm interested in that. Um, I'm, I also volunteer for the Partnership for Youth Justice, which um, is a court alternative for youth who are involved in their uh, usually first uh, misdemeanor offense. It's a, a restorative justice program uh, where if they complete the tasks that are given to them and take accountability, they don't end up with a criminal record. So I'm also interested in juvenile court um, and juvenile justice. So that uh, would be an area of interest for me as well. Thank you, uh, Jason. Uh, yes, um, Oregon is one of the last states that have uh, partial verdicts, and um, I'm kind of interested in um, jury selection. And um, could you um, expand on some of the things you talked about? You know, um, I believe that the Supreme Court overturned that. The United States Supreme Court overturned that. Like I said, I'm losing track of time. Last week, the week before, but allowing. Um, non-unanimous verdicts. Only Oregon and Louisiana um, had them, and the Supreme Court, I believe, has said uh, that juries have to be unanimous when uh, convicting a person of a felony. Um, I'm really interested in juror service because our state law says that, the, that a jury should be a fair cross-section of the community, and I don't know how we can get that when we're paying jurors $10 a day. Um, studies have been done uh, that say that, you know, that's the number one reason um, people don't show up for jury duty or ask to be excused is that they seconds. can't work to serve. Um, and so that's, you know, I, I think that's a significant issue that the legislative bodies are, are going to have to address. And just a, a follow-up question, um, you know, the Department of uh, Human Resources or uh, Department of Health here in the state, you know, when you're filing your unemployment, they're always listing uh, jury duty. Um, and if it's only $10 a day, uh, it just seems kind of ridiculous. Um, what should be uh, adequate pay um, for a day service? 
You know, um, there was just a case decided by the Washington State Supreme Court called uh, Rocha versus King County, where uh, they were suing to ask for minimum wage for jurors as employees. Um, and our state Supreme Court said they're not employees and they're not going to get a minimum wage. But in that decision, they write about um, a commission that looked into jury service and that commission recommended $62. And I'm not sure where that amount came from, um, but it's certainly more than 10. So I don't know what the right number is, but I know it's not $10 a day. No, thank you so much. Thank you. Any further questions? I have another. Uh, what are the major influences uh, on your life? Well, as I mentioned, my mother um, has been a great influence on me. She was an early feminist, uh, an early environmentalist. I think before that was even a word. My mother was composting before that was a thing. You know, she was putting, I just thought she was putting coffee grounds out in the yard. I, you know, I mean, she was really, has been really ahead of the curve. Um, when I was in middle school, our family went to Washington, D.C. for a, a visit. Uh, and we went to the United States Supreme Court, and we were really fortunate that we were able to see an oral argument. I just read an article about how hard that is to do now, and people line up at four in the morning. But for whatever reason, when we were there, we were able to see one. And, you know, that really had a profound effect on me. And I found out later my mother took me because she was hoping I'd become Ten a lawyer. And, um, and so, uh, so her, her plan worked. I, I did become a lawyer, and, and hopefully will become a judge. So I'd say my mother. Great, thank you. Any further questions? Sorry, I have to kind of scroll through. Jeff, please go ahead. Uh, thanks for being here. Uh, so as you, as you probably know, our court system and, and judicial system overall is uh, uh, very underfunded. Uh, like a lot of government. And I'm wondering what you think the appropriate role for a sitting judge would be to advocate for um, greater funding for the court system and the judicial system. I think there's a role for a judge because the judges are the ones who um, see the consequences of underfunding. And I, I think that they can share that. Um, and, you know, I think juror pay being an example, right, um, that judges are seeing the impact of, you know, how many uh, subpoenas are having to go out, how many uh, people show up, how many people are asking to be excused for hardship um, because of finances, you know, and that's just one example. Um, I think the King County Superior Court in downtown Seattle uh, needs renovation to make it more accessible for uh, people with disabilities. Um, I have heard uh, people with mobility impairments in particular who have struggled uh, to get into that courthouse. And so I, I do think that judges have a role because they're seeing firsthand what the consequences are. Thank you. Um, any further questions? I have one. Uh, what do you perceive as uh, obstacles to justice? Well, that's a big question. Um, I think uh, one, one of the big access to justice challenges on, on the civil side is um, access to a lawyer and people not being able to afford a lawyer. I heard a statistic that something like a third of people in King County who have a civil matter are appearing pro se. Um, because they can't afford an attorney. Um, I volunteered at the Renton Legal Clinic where I saw a wide variety of people who had serious civil legal problems but couldn't afford an attorney. Um, we, I think the King County Bar Association has an amazing pro bono program and they do a really good job with their neighborhood um, legal clinics, but it's just not enough. Um, and uh, there are wonderful organizations raising money for civil legal aid, and that's great, and we need more of that. Um, I don't know what the solution is, but that is certainly a, a significant um, access to justice issue. Great, thank you. Any other questions? We have a couple of minutes left. Oh, 
just scrolling through. Sorry, I, it's a little bit of a silence. <laughs> All right, I think we're good then. Uh, would you like to do a uh, brief one minute wrap up to kind of um, talk to the camera and tell voters why they should vote for you if they see your name on a ballot? Well, um, my goals as a judge, as I mentioned, would be um, to listen to people, to treat everyone fairly. I would want people who appear before me to feel that justice was done, regardless of the outcome, regardless of how I ruled. Uh, I am committed to fairness and equity uh, for all people, and I am ready to work hard. I, I would really like to serve the people of King County as a judge. Great, thank you so much.